we're going to talk about fish ears a little bit. Um, and fish, of course, don't have ears on the outside of their bodies, floppy things that would get caught in the water. Uh, but they do have, in some cases, fairly complicated hearing systems. Uh, but when we talk about fish, we're talking about a lot of different animals. There are fish that uh, live in holes. There's fish that live on the bottom of the ocean, flat-like. There are fish that migrate long distances uh, in large schools. And there are fish that are solitary. So each of those uh, different living conditions will bring out or have evolved different hearing capabilities dependent upon the environment that they live in. So we're going to take the Acme uh, Model 1A fish, the standard fish that has, uh, is bilaterally symmetric, symmetrical. It has uh, an eye on each side of its head. It has a lateral line on each side of its body. It has um, a symmetrical brain and it has a swim bladder. And uh, each of those mechanisms have uh, our kind of perceptual links to their surroundings, but we're talking about sound here. So we're gonna start with the lateral line. Uh, the lateral line is a line of nerves or neuromasts that uh, extend out of uh, the side of the body of the fish. And uh, they are very similar to the cilia that are found in the inside of the cochlea of terrestrial animals. And, uh, they're little nerves that move with particle motion. Things around these fish move, these little, little cilia also move. So it's a particle motion sensing uh, tool. And if we go back to our How Sound Works uh, video, we can look at the difference between particle motion and pressure gradient. Now the pressure gradient sensor is uh, in the swim bladder. It's kind of like a, a diaphragm, if you will, on the side of uh, the ears of terrestrial animals, um, but it's basically a gas bubble, and they use that gas bubble to mediate their buoyancy, but also it absorbs uh, pressure gradient energy uh, and transmits it to physical motion. Uh, that physical motion is conferred up into the uh, brain of the fish by way of little bones called Weberian ossicles. Again, there's a uh, kinship to the little bones, the three little bones in the inner ear of mammals. Uh, but in the case of fish, there's usually four of them. Why there's four, we're not sure. Uh, what they are conferring uh, in terms of the, you know, the gain that's uh, required to take the physical motion of the swim bladder and move it into a physical motion that can be sensed by the uh, inner ear of the fish. So the fish also have this uh, internal hearing mechanism that is comprised of this bone here, which is called uh, autolith, uh, hearing lith is stone. Um, and it's uh, essentially an accelerometer. It's fairly heavy, it's fairly massive, more massive than the rest of the body of the fish. And what happens is this flat surface here remains kind of stationary as the fish body moves, it kind of lags a little bit and uh, it rubs against the sensory epithelia, which gives the, uh, the fish another hearing sense. So this uh, model fish that we have has three different uh, hearing mechanisms. It has a lateral line, it has a swim bladder coupled through the vibrian ossicles, and it has this um, ot otolith here in the epithelial, sensory epithelium. So, it has actually a fairly complicated way of hearing. The inner ear fish also has another uh, set of uh, sensors that are akin to terrestrial animals. They are the semicircular canals. But in our model fish, these semicircular canals are quite complex. Uh, they basically sense motion on X, Y, and Z axis. But because fish are suspended in a lot of uh, different attitudes, they are a more complicated uh, array of organs than what terrestrial and we usually are subject to gravity our feet are on the ground but these animals are swimming on all manner of different directions and fairly um, rapid ability to be able to change directions and so these uh, semicircular canals will uh, confer that uh, attitudinal information into uh, let the fish know where it is. We'll talk about the perceptual modalities of these things in a future chapter.